record of success um, is incredible and really sold on the fact um, that this guy wants to be great uh, and is willing to put in the, the time and effort to be great. I, I'm really close with his college coach, Sean Miller. We worked together years ago, um, and I talked to him three times about him. The last time yesterday to just say, hey, look, we're, we're going to take your guy. Now, I can't get screwed on this. I mean, make sure. And, and he just went through it again, same thing. And he said, look, he's the kind of guy you're going to practice for two and a half hours and you're going to end up having to throw him out of the gym at the end. I mean, he wants it badly. He's going to be in there all the time. So put his package of skills together with his mentality. And, uh, you know, that's what we really, really like about him. When, when Colley Stein went six to Sacramento and Moody I and uh, Johnson were still available, was it pretty much down to those two guys for you? Those were the next two guys on our board, but but we knew going in that uh, that if Moutier, we, we thought Moutier could go higher, but we, we knew there was no way that he was getting to us because we knew that both Sacramento and Denver, uh, Sacramento went ahead and took a big guy, which was their other thing that they wanted, but what we didn't figure with those two teams in terms of what they wanted point guard-wise would let him go. So uh, really... Um, once Collie Stein went, we knew, we knew we were going to get Stanley. Yeah, a lot of people are in this town and wonder why not Winslow. Well, uh, look, I think the main reason, first of all, that Just is a very good player and a great kid and competes very hard. Um, the main reason people ask that question is because he's from Duke and they won the national championship. I mean, it's not like people sat down and, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just being honest. It's not like people sat down and analyzed their games. I mean, but when the last game was played this year, Duke was playing and Justice Winslow was in there. And so, um, you know, there's a little bit of a bump from that. Um, you know, I, look, I, I, we thought that's, you know, I, I'm not going to get into anything that would negate Justice. I think he's a really good player. We, we just thought for the reasons I gave you that Stanley was the, was the best player on the board at that point. Stan, you said that you anticipate your starter at small board coming out of free agency. If Stanley's with the second unit and the second unit is Meeks, Tolliver, maybe Brandon Jennings, you, you have shooting and scoring. Will he complement that, that bunch? Well, I, I think so. And look, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, um, he's got some work to do on his shooting, but, you know, he, he shot 37% from three on a, on a good number of attempts. So... And he can shoot the ball. The, the, you know, we've got to make some changes in terms of his release point on his shot and stuff, but he shoots the ball well, um, and has made improvement in it every year through high school and through his freshman year in college, which is the other thing, you know, that we looked at with him. This is a guy whose, whose game has evolved. It's gotten better every year. Um, he's shot the ball better every year. Uh, he's one of the younger guys in the draft. Um, so we, we think he's physically ready to play now. Now he's going to have to earn those minutes, but he's physically ready to play with his strength, but he's also got a huge upside and, and room for growth. So, um, we sort of hit it both ways with him. Stan, this question is for Stan and Tom. Compare. I need a break. Okay. Let yeah, Tom yeah, go yeah, first yeah. on this one. Uh, compare the, I guess, the uh, <clears throat> excitement of this year by getting your first round pick versus last year when you you didn't have a pick this night, even though you were prepared for it, but just compare the two, two nights. Well, I mean, of course, it's more, you know, it's more exciting to be in the first round. And, uh, but for me personally, it was really exciting just to go in through the whole process with Stan and uh, Jeff Bauer in the organization they had through the whole process. I mean, the fact is, um, you know, Stanley was on the board for Stan the, the whole time. And, um, you know, you you see all the stuff on ESPN and in you know whatever whatever broadcast you're watching, and there's a lot of things that happen. But the consistency of the way Stan showed it, you know, there wasn't a lot of gambling for us tonight. Um, so what was exciting to me, you know, as I woke up this morning and went to bed last night, is that we knew exactly, you know, what was there, what was possible, and if there was something new that happened, 
that the, the Jeff and Stan would handle it. They were fully organized. And um, so it's always, you know, I think, hey, we love the first round, the higher the better, right? So, but the reality is for me personally, the, the excitement was in this organization, the way these guys, you know, Jeff and Stan were organized. Uh, f not just for the evening, but really this has been for months on end. We met a couple months ago and they went through and, you know, their, their board and, and the whole thing. They evaluate character, they evaluate hard work, and, um, you know, they evaluate who can contribute to this next season. And uh, this is something that they've put a lot of time into. So, um, you know, it's exciting to have a, a high first rounder. But for me, what was really exciting is just this you know, the fact that we were so organized for this. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously for us, um, last year, the way we, you know, we had to sit there and wait on well, whatever it was, May 20th, to see the ping pong balls come up, and you've got an 85% chance of having your pick, and, you know, you, you end up without getting it, you know, um, with Cleveland jumping up. I mean, it, it was it was disappointing. Um, but at the same time, you know, if we had had the pick last year, we wouldn't have had it this year. So that's just the way the deal was. He was so. excited, though. He was excited. No, it was great to have it this year. But we don't want to be in the lottery much longer. I, I'd right. rather have. That's right. I'd rather have more exciting nights on the court, uh, playoff games than uh, than draft lotteries. So hopefully, uh, we don't have too many more of these. How many trade calls were you getting after uh, Moody went to Denver in that five minutes? Well, both then and. After our pick with Stanley, really until about 10 minutes ago, I mean, the phone's been ringing with four or five different teams wanting to trade for Stanley, offering us their first, the guy they took this year or some people who hadn't picked already, plus future pick, plus players. I mean, we've had, we've had a ton of interest uh, all night on people. But with that pick, and, and, you know, we had a couple, David, but we at least had to pause and talk about one time we even got up from the table, you know, Jeff and Brian and I, and, and talked, but, but most of them were easy to say no to. And at the end, we said no to all of them because, you know, we have a belief that this guy not only has the game, but has the mentality um, that we need and want going forward. That, that when you got up from the table, was that before? Uh, was it before the no, pick? Yes, it was before the pick, yes. Was there yes. a thought of trading up at all? Well, we, we, not so, I mean, a, a thought, we, we contacted, we contacted everybody, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the, the one thing like Tom talked about, I mean, you always want to be thorough, and so, um, Jeff talked to everybody about, you know, what the possibilities are and what you would have to give up. Um, we just did not, really want to surrender other assets. I mean, we're at the point where, you know, we need to get better players, but we also need more of them. So to have to give up a player to move up, at the end of the day, um, we didn't want to do that. Okay. Can I piggyback up with Terry? The, the Winslow comparison with Johnson, did Stanley, like, have to stamp at his individual workout here? How good he was? Nah, the individual workouts... To me, look, um, would be if, if, if we're talking percentage of the decision, the end of the workouts here, for me anyway, and the way I evaluate them, maybe 1%, 2% on the workout. I, I put more on actually getting a chance to talk to them here and get a feel for guys. And, and again, it, it wasn't, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you exactly, but it, the, the choice was not between those two at the end. It was Cauley Um, I don't really want to get into where we were on our board. I mean, you get to a point of, you know, almost like you're criticizing other people. I mean, we, we thought at the point, you know, I mean, Stanley was the best guy on the board. And I understand the comparisons for justice, but that's not really the comparison that it came down to for us. I think you told the fans earlier that you liked his toughness. You think he'll fit in with the Detroit mentality and just the, the way that the fans are. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, we we needed a little bit more physicality um you know guys that would get into people um i think he's got a chance to be a, a very 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 good defender I, I i think he's the kind of guy who will not back away even as a rookie 
I don't see him backing away from any challenge. I mean, I think he's the guy that's going to welcome going at all these guys that he's, you know, been watching. Um, you know, it'll be difficult. There's no question, but but I, I think he's going to welcome the challenge. I I couldn't like his mentality and the way he approaches the game more than I do. You talked about the draft board, how you wanted to work down your toughest decision of being the chicken or the beef. You kind of joked about. It. Did it turn out that? Easy for you? <clears throat> well, yeah. I, I mean, as far as the actual pick, yeah, because we had the board laid out. the the tough The tough decisions draft night are the trades that present themselves. Those are the things that you, you've got to sort of think on your feet and make decisions. As far as when your pick comes, it, it is really as simple as next guy on the board is the guy we're taking. He seemed pretty genuine both in Chicago when we talked to Aaron when he visited here that this is the place he wanted to be. Does that count for anything in your mind? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, again, not, not a huge part. You want the guy for other reasons, but um, I, I think, look, he, he has a he didn't know me before this whole process, but again, his college coach and I know each other well. He knew of that connection. Um, you know, similar approaches, I think. Um, you know, we're both the uh, very gentle, nurturing types. So I, I think that, uh, you know, he'd appreciate that. And uh, no, but similarities with his with his college coach in the environment. Um, one of the guys on our staff, one of our video guys, Samson Coyote, had been a video guy with Team USA and had gotten to know him well. So it was just another piece of familiarity with our organization. Um, but he genuinely did want to be here. I mean, Sean told me, you know, when he came back, like he really wants to get to you guys. So, you know, it wasn't the reason for our pick, but it's certainly a nice bonus that we've got a guy who really wants to be here.